Hello, everyone. Today on The Final Bar, my guest is Samantha LaDuke from LaDuke Trading. We're going to talk about the interest rate environment, what that means relative to other asset classes. The S&P today certainly finishing to the upside. Choppier day, much like we had yesterday, but resolving this one to the upside, whereas yesterday was sort of choppy finishing in the, uh, in the middle range. Certainly value over growth with the cyclicals continuing to exert leadership, push on to the upside. Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Final Bar. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the final bar. I'm your host, Dave Keller. I'm the chief market strategist, <coughs> excuse me, at stockcharts.com in a sunny Redmond, Washington. Thanks for joining us every weekday after the close as we focus on the message that the markets provide through the lens of technical analysis and behavioral finance, focusing on the charts and how they are moving, how the momentum is shifting. And as what we've seen in the last couple of days, I would argue, is a continued rotation away from the growthy stuff overall, and today is a perfect example of that, a rotation into the cyclical stuff. Things like materials, Nucor we hired, highlighted earlier this week, rotating to new all-time highs, but also industrials, financials with a lot of the banks uh, rotating to new highs as well. Utilities even outperforming handily today with the XLU up almost uh, 1%. So we're going to talk about sort of this rotational environment. I think uh, part of the story for sure, if not the story, is the interest rate environment. So I'm excited to talk with my guest, Samantha LaDuke, uh, who has some charts to help us try to make sense of things. Also, the run in commodities, which has been uh, which has been no small uptrend with the run that we've seen. The question is, you know, what's next? Where's the leadership in the next uh, in this next phase? Now, I mentioned we have Samantha LaDuke coming up today. I'm excited to talk with her tomorrow on the 12th. We have Matt Tuttle portfolio manager and founder of Tuttle Capital Management. Next week, three great guests for you, Sean McLaughlin from All Star Charts on Tuesday. On Wednesday, Jay Soloff from Investors Alley. And then Thursday, Larry Berman from ETF Capital Management up in Toronto. Also, just as a reminder, I will be doing my next webcast through market misbehavior uh, coming up next Tuesday, 1 p.m. Eastern. We'll be talking about relative strength investing. We'll talk about why it's important to focus on relative strength, focus on how to identify relative winners and laggards, and how to use data visualization and technical indicators to make sure that you are leaning into what's working and leaning away from what's not. Should be a lot of fun. Free events. Go to marketmisbehavior.com slash relative strength to find out more info on that one. Let's continue on with today's market recap. So as I mentioned, the, the adjective we used yesterday was choppy. I think I could probably still use that adjective today. But today was sort of a V-shaped uh, day with a sell-up sort of in the uh, morning session, sort of a V-bottom and uh, and reverting higher through the course of the day. So it didn't really eclipse the morning high by the end of the day, but overall certainly finishing pretty strong into the close. And the S&P up about a quarter of a percent. So it's not a huge update. These are not uh, dramatic volatile moves, but a lot of choppiness from point A to point P uh, to point B, excuse me, for sure. The NASDAQ lower today, just a little bit. The NASDAQ 100 down about 0.2%. We mentioned it's sort of a value over growth uh, sort of day or certainly cyclicals over uh, uh, over everything today. Uh, the VIX actually down testing 16 again. Other asset classes very quickly, the 10-year yield actually fairly choppy and the TNX was uh, was down uh, to around 131 earlier, sort of uh, rallied or, or increased to go to the end of the day with bond prices coming off a bit. The dollar index remains relatively stable, although we talked about the dollar uh, index strengthening over time, this rotation from a weaker dollar environment just uh, you know, over time to a stronger dollar environment in 2021. And U.S. stocks continue to outperform global stocks. And I, I, as long as the dollar continues to remain stronger, that's certainly most likely to continue. Precious metals recovering today with, uh, with the GLD up uh, about 1.4%, which is a nice improvement from where we were yesterday. Commodities as a whole uh, going higher. Oil prices uh, appreciating as well. And the energy sector was up about three quarters of a percent uh, looking at cryptocurrencies, a lot of green on the charts here with some of them up in a fairly significant amount, but Bitcoin finishing the day up 2%. 
uh, testing around 46,500. This is uh, after this rotation out of the 30 to 42,000 range, breaking above 42,000, which I, I would argue is fairly significant, now continuing to pound higher and nearing that 50,000 uh, level one day at a time. I just actually posted a video to my own YouTube channel called Market Misbehavior with four potential scenarios for Bitcoin, the very bullish scenario, the very bearish scenario, and two more in the middle. Go, go over there to uh, the Market Misbehavior channel on YouTube if you want to look at that uh, video and vote on which of the four scenarios you see as most likely and why. Looking at a chart of the S&P 500, to be honest with you, no real change on this chart from yesterday, no real change from a couple of weeks ago, which is this continued pattern of higher highs and higher lows. Uh, you know, my guest yesterday, we were talking uh, with Gary Dean about uh, the potential for downside, the fact that the uh, uptrend is fairly exhausted or in terms of it's, it's had a significant run, which is absolutely right. Um, you know, I'm always skeptical when we talk about trend exhaustion only because, uh, you know, what I learned from spending a lot of uh, time with money managers who were trend followers, when the trend is working, you don't fight it, right? You don't fight the trend, you continue to follow it until it stops going higher. So I think the most bearish thing that could happen to the S&P is it stops going up and days like today are not days when that's actually happening. We continue to make new intraday highs, new closing highs, that pattern is more indicative of a uh, fairly stable bullish market. And again, it's what's happening now is it's the rotation of what's pushing prices higher. The FANG stocks are elevating it, uh, elevating in uh, sort of May, June, July. All of a sudden, it's back to the value, the, the cyclicals that are rotating back higher. And you have things like financials making new all-time highs, industrials, materials uh, pushing to the upside. So, you know, you're, you're seeing the rotational environment, but at the end of the day, the S&P continues to net, net out as a, uh, as a positive. You know, one thing we haven't looked at a ton, and I'm mentioning it, questioning in the back of my head where exactly I have this chart. So I'm going to spend about 20 seconds trying to find it, and then I'm going to move on to something else. But I'm pretty sure I have an equal weighted S&P. There it is. So say I'm pretty, pretty sure I have an equal weighted S&P in here somewhere. You know, it's interesting rotation on this chart. This is a ratio of the RSP, which is an equal weighted S&P ETF, to the SPY, which is the traditional S&P 500 cap weighted ETF. You can see this ratio going downwards from sort of early June to mid July. This is indicating, um, you know, the the um, uh, deterioration of or the, the relative underperformance really of the mid cap uh, end or the, the smaller end of the S&P versus the larger end of the S&P, which is accentuated on the cap weighted side. So if this ratio is going up, basically the mega cap stocks are really outperforming. If this ratio is going down, it's the smaller end of the S&P that's actually doing a little better uh, on a relative basis. And you can see that this ratio has turned higher now in the last couple of weeks or last month. You've seen the equal weighted S&P actually going higher, equal weighted S&P now breaking out um, to new highs. I don't know if I have that chart readily available that I can bring it up pretty quickly by doing this. And uh, it's making a new high as well. So when the equal weighted S&P is making a new all-time high, that tells you it's not just a small number of mega cap stocks that are pushing the market higher. This is the uh, this is a broader universe of things that are doing it. Now, depending on how you measure breadth, you're getting a mixed signal right now. The equal weighted S&P going higher. But if we look at something like, um, what else could we look at? The breadth by cap tiers. This has been much less supportive of the recent uptrend. Now you can see that they're improving uh, quite a bit, right? So the story was uh, the S and P breadth going higher, all the other breadth indicators sloping downwards. June into early July, you can see that all of these broke their 50-day moving average, except for the S and P advanced decline line, which has continued to be strong pretty much consistently through this entire period. But now you're starting to see these other uh, advanced decline lines sort of testing the 50-day moving average from below. I would argue to really give an all clear here, you need to see them make new highs. You need to see them get above the June highs, but that's not far away. If we would have a big uh, couple of days pushing to the upside with broader participation, like we see on a day like today, uh, overall, that's a pretty, uh, that could give an all clear signal telling you that the bearish divergence that we saw with Brett was relatively unfounded and that there's enough strength on individual stocks that are going higher. What's interesting and frustrating about this market is that even though you're getting these negative signs from, uh, from Brett, there are still plenty of stocks making new highs. I'm not struggling to find stocks making new highs. And I think that's uh, a key aspect of this market. That's why we've called it a stealth correction, I think, since April. Um, you know, a number of stocks have pulled back a good amount. But if you look at some of the stocks in the cyclical sectors that are now bouncing higher, they, they gave a lot of the gains back recently and are now rotating back to the upside. So they've had their correction. They've had their, uh, their pullback. They've had their digestion phase. And now they're ready to have the next course and 
uh, push price to new highs. I think this is a key chart to watch is the percent of stocks above their 50-day moving average. It's uh, It was down to around 32% which was 60% lower than it was in April, meaning 60% over half of the S&P had broken down through their 50-day and remained below there by mid-June. Look at how many of these have come back now. It's uh, It's gone from 32% to around 63, 64%, which means quite a few stocks have actually broken above their 50-day. To me, though, it still tells me 36% of S&P members are still below their 50-day. So I think there is still plenty of uh, proof to be made to indicate an all clear and to feel really good about further upside. And again, we're in the seasonally weakest part of the year, which means I tend to be skeptical uh, of anything. I tend to think more cautiously and think about potential downside than uh, than potential upside. We just have a, a, a little bit left before we need to take a quick break. So just to remind you of the uh, of the sector rotation today, um, you know, further uh, upside for cyclicals with materials, the number one sector up one and a half percent. Industrials number two, financials number three. So it's really a pro-cyclical move. But after that, it was utilities, and utilities are a really interesting sector to look at. We're going to look at that uh, chart a little later uh, today. Uh, underperforming, we have healthcare, which is interesting because the healthcare sector has been sort of an area of emerging strength. You've seen some strong performance from a number of the healthcare groups, particular things like supplies and equipment and others. But recently, things like pharma, Moderna is obviously the the obvious example of that, but many others that have rotated higher. A little later in today's show, we're going to do a sector deep dive. We're going to focus on this sector right here, right in the middle, the forgotten sector of consumer discretionary. All these other sectors are sort of exchanging leadership. Consumer discretionary is right in line with the markets. However, I think there's some interesting pockets of opportunity, both on the upside and downside. We'll get to as many of those charts as we can. We're going to need to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with my guest, Samantha Leduc. We'll see you in a minute. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Final Bar. This is Dave Keller here at StockCharts.com. It's so good to have you join us every weekday after the close for our show. A couple of quick announcements before we bring on my guest, Samantha LaDuke. First off, we love to hear from you. Feedback on the show, feedback on your host, feedback on our guests, but most importantly, questions that are coming up as you are analyzing your own charts. Our goal at StockCharts is to help empower investors to make better decisions using the toolkit of technical analysis, and we're here to help you along the way. You can get your emails or your questions to us. One of three ways, first is via email, the final bar at stockcharts.com, via Twitter at final bar SCTV, via YouTube, just put a comment below the video you're watching on our Stock Charts channel. We would love to hear your questions. Hope to answer one of your questions on our next mailbag segment, which will be on Friday's show of this week. Also, go to stockchartstv.com. Use your email address. You can set up a free account. Start watching all of our great content right from uh, our website, also from all your mobile devices. Fantastic guests like Samantha LaDuc, special events like The Pitch and uh, and uh, um, charting the second half, our mid-year market outlook, and great shows like The Final Bar and many others. Go to stockchartstv.com or search on the app stores for Stock Charts TV On Demand. I want to welcome on today's guest joining us on the show once again, Samantha LaDuke. Samantha is the founder of LaDukeTrading.com, comes to us from Massachusetts. Samantha, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. So, Samantha, you always do a great job of sort of uh, helping us understand the macro environment, the big picture with a great technical overlay. And I love the charts that you bring with you. We're starting looking at a long-term view of 20-year yields. Interest rates, certainly a big part of the story with a lot of movement now. What are What is your toolkit telling you? Well, I've talked with you in recent past about my theme since last summer of things over paper. It is very much that kind of growth to value, value to growth rotation, which I really uh, focus on for clients, basically timing the sector rotation. And right now we're still very nicely in this um, theme of, of in, you know, inflation and it's sticky. I'm not... Um, upset about that. I think there's some wage inflation, but there's also asset inflation. Um, and it's for right now, the reason that we spend so much time talking about interest rates and Fed taper and the re and you know, in the rest to determine uh, what monetary tools are going to be thrown at the market for these inflection points. And I think it's been a, a dollar short conversation we've had since August of last year. Um, that continues to, to play out. 
um, you know, dollar has been doing okay, and everyone is really focused on Jackson Hole come August and then September, and all kinds of announcements about, you know, raising uh, rates as well as tapering. But for me, it's just not the the mantra that I'm on. I still think we have more digestion. This is one chart that kind of shows me um, in the 20-year Treasury yield that we could have some very higher uh, yields in the future, but for right now, they're doing a really good job of creating potentially that right shoulder. All bets are off if it breaks the neckline, right? Um, but you can also see from the lower panel that rate of change has been very, very firm. So I'm, you know, unemployment rate still needs to drop from its 5.4% right now to near 4%, you know, the pre-COVID and stay at or believe it uh, below it for really a convincing period of time in order for the labor market to be at the pre-pandemic levels and for that Fed tapering to really ramp up. Lots of Fed heads are coming out talking about, um, you know, the train of its time, but ultimately it, it's just, I think it's a little bit too soon. I think we have some time, some period of digestion. Very, very interesting. Um, chart number two, Samantha, is, is a ratio that I think speaks to that uh, things over paper thesis you were sharing. Talk to us about chart number two. Well, this is very much this uh, theme of yields uh, rising help that reflation trade. And even though we have stagflation in large part with rising prices and lots of money chasing fewer goods, um, the point of the matter of this particular ratio chart, and by the way, that has popped up to about point, I don't know, eight, eight um, the past few days, is that it's a really good tell for uh, the inflation bait with commodities. So for trades, it's great to kind of basket trade. I mean, energy still leads, interestingly enough, uh, this year for sector returns. It's up 33%, even though it's been languishing for months, right, sideways. Real estate comes in number two. Financials at number three, up 30%. Communications. Tech is number five. So even though there are pockets, of course, always in tech, um, this lovely play of you know earnings um, expansion for cyclicals is still, I believe, uh, great value going into 2022. We're literally, companies are guiding 20% higher for 2022 in the cyclical corp space. Uh, stocks will trade up. The New York Stock Exchange has just broken out recently, which is very supportive for small caps, especially IWN, which is the value plays, SPHB, which is, the again, the value. Um, we just got some really nice breadth and cumulative volume impulses this week in response to the, fis into the fiscal um, infrastructure uh, bill that's being pushed really hard and growing. Um, I think it's actually very supportive for yields down the road. It's a great set of charts and a and a and a, uh, a well articulated thesis, Samantha. And you've certainly you're certainly seeing the strength now of uh, of, of some of the cyclicals that have been have been pulling back a little bit, right? Things like energy that you mentioned and uh, and others, materials all rotating to the upside. So when you think about, we just have about 30 seconds left. When we think about between now and year end, I think I know your answer, but where would you be looking opportunistically? What are things that are not overextended that you think have the best opportunity to benefit from this sort of scenario? Any particular oh, sectors are, or themes yeah. that you think make sense? There are still commodities and cyclical and value plays that have been tracking on a weekly chart. They're 10 week very, very well. They have pulled back. They're now in the, in the process of trying to break out again from coal, natural gas, um, you know, just there's a whole bunch. It caught me kind of off guard. I have a long list, actually, of what I call the safety plays because <laughs> sure. they don't move like hot fire flames like tech. Um, but they're absolutely grinding higher and a really nice value for doubling into the next year or two. Samantha, it's fantastic to speak to you. As always, you, you bring a lot of great uh, content and, uh, and ideas with you. Hope you stay safe. Be well. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you so much. Happy summer. You too. That's Samantha LeDuc. Samantha is the founder of LeDucTrading.com based in Massachusetts. And I, I love the two charts. And again, what I love the most about them is the time frame. You know, when we talk about this environment right now. We talk about, uh, you know, the performance of cyclicals or, or growth versus value, small versus large. It's so easy to get drawn into the short-termism of all of it, right? Just thinking of this week or this day and what it means and what we try to do and what I'm thankful of 
when we bring someone like Samantha Samantha on is she shows you sort of the long term trajectory and helps put a proper long term perspective on some of these movements that we've had. I you know things like higher rates. It, I, I've mentioned it probably before. I, there's no doubt in my mind that rates are going to be materially higher than they are now at some point down the road. The question always is how we get from point A to B, and, and it's rarely in a straight line. It's usually fits and starts, or what from a technical perspective might call impulse and then corrective waves to get there. But I love the chart of uh, of the 20 year yield to sort of put that long term trajectory into proper perspective. Let's continue on with our next segment, the sector deep dive. I mentioned earlier. Uh, just thinking about the consumer discretionary sector. It's one of those that, you know, I think a lot of people focus on, uh, you know, at least the big two, right? We have Amazon and uh, uh, Tesla who are two of the large, you know, sort of mega cap names that dwarf most other stocks in the uh, in the XLY. Uh, Home Depot would be the third one of those, but it's less of a, uh, you know, meme type stock, uh, whereas Amazon is widely uh, talked about in social media as our Tesla. We're going to start there, but then we're going to quickly look at um, some of the other charts in the sector, because I think that's where um, some opportunities could certainly be. As I mentioned before, a, a big part of my process is looking at a bunch of individual stocks over the weekend, but then especially during the week and screening for breakouts and breakdowns. I've not been struggling to find breakouts, and I've also not been struggling to find breakdowns. I feel like there are stocks that are in both of those buckets, but especially in consumer, in financials, in healthcare, um, you know, I've not been struggling to find stocks breaking out to the upside and sort of rotating higher. And I think that's uh, uh, you know, informative. I think that that helps you understand the um, the stock picking environment. I think we're in. Amazon, however, is one that is clearly an outlier. And I, you know, if there's a story of the end of the Fang trade, at least for now, I think Amazon might be the best illustration of that. Although others are are testing as to which one would be the best one. Apple might be another one. You know, stocks that that broke out. That if everything is good and if this is a normal environment and I'm not thinking of anything else that's happening, these are high probability breakout charts. This is a 10 month base in Amazon pounded off from September over here to June into July. You see the rotation above that uh, that resistance level. That is a big base breakout that should measure into the low to mid 4000s if you're just using the basic measuring technique of the height of the pattern and projecting it from the high. But now it's become what's called a failed breakout. It's where you have a breakout, but you don't get the follow through. After that big breakout day, you sort of fizzled. You got maybe a, a little bit higher, but not much. From there, it's now made a lower high. Now it's made a lower low. And now we're testing the 200 day moving average again. So you know, as a contrarian, could you see a bounce off the 200-day? I'm sure you could. For me, as a trend follower, though, I'm much interested, much more interested in the trend, and I'm seeing something that was a failed breakout and is now threatening to break down. I think breaking below the 200-day would be a significant, uh, significant rotation lower for uh, for a key stock in the uh, in the sector. Chart number two we'll look at is uh, Tesla. I'll go to my uh, go to the chart that I have saved up here. So, you know, for me, I think the chart of Tesla, it's really at a, um, it's at a decision point. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, there's, uh, you know, Tesla, I think is in, it has been range bound and remains range bound as much as this feels like a rotation higher. And I get the argument for it. What I've not seen is the follow through much like Amazon broke out of resistance and then fizzled. You're seeing the same thing with Tesla. You know, this blue line here represents 700, which is where we rallied up. We bounced down to around 550 in March. Again in May, we rotated back higher and hit uh, and hit uh, 700 there in late June. We then uh, bounced off that resistance a number of times. We just broke above it, and right on this day, the first day in August, it feels like. This could be returning back to the, the previous all-time highs, but we literally have not gone higher than that moment. It's been sideways for the last week and a half. Now, a lot of this range is compressed because of the significant move you have on the left side of the chart. So if we zoomed in a little bit, it'd probably be a little easier to see some of that uh, short-term action. But my point is you had a breakout that have not that has not fallen through. So the reason I would argue why the sector as a whole is not doing better, even though there are a number of stocks that are performing just fine, it's because these mega cap stocks are really not following through to the upside, uh, and that's a concern. Now, Home Depot, on the other hand, is actually setting up in a pretty constructive way. It looks like a lot of the uh, cyclical sectors, uh, financials and industrials and others that pulled back sort of May into June and now rotating back higher, making another pattern of uh, higher lows, most recently rotating higher, making a new swing high today. And we're right back in the range of the, uh, of the long-term high day there from early May. Let's go quickly through a couple other a uh, couple other charts in the sector. A deep dive on the show is is never that deep, unfortunately, but hopefully it gives you an idea. There are there are three buckets of stocks I would talk about in terms of uptrends. Uh, one, we have the long term consistent uptrends. I would put Bath and Body Works in that. 
uh, in that uh, in that camp. Relative strength overall has been fairly constructive. This has seen, seen a fairly consistent uptrend of higher highs and higher lows uh, and has remained above its upward trending 50 day moving average. Those are pretty decent charts to bet on to continue. Target is probably the best example of that. Just a nice long term uptrend it hasn't even touched its 50 day uh, since March. So charts like that, I think, are holding up very, very well. And there again, there are many others I could uh, hit on. Maybe Garmin is a, is maybe the most impressive in terms of its continuation, acceleration to the upside overall uh, and extremely overbought right now, which suggests further upside down the, uh, down the road. The second bucket where things sort of in the rotating higher potentially camp, I would put Tesla in that, but it still has a little more to, uh, to prove. Haynes Brands is actually bouncing uh, pretty nicely this week, sort of gapped above the 50 day and it was on my watch list over the weekend to see if it could continue. And so far, I like the fact that it's getting above that uh, early June high. That's actually a nice follow through to the upside. Obviously resistance with some of these at the previous highs, but look to see if it's able to eclipse those. In home builders, you're seeing some nice rotation back to the upside. Uh, Lennar is testing its uh, long-term high. Uh, this is DR Horton uh, rotating back uh, and breaking uh, breaking above its recent swing high, uh, making higher lows along the way. So there's some constructive charts that had been pulling back that are starting rotating higher. Then you have what I would call the uh, question mark charts. That is not the ticker. GPS is gap. Um, you have charts like this that are bouncing off potentially bouncing off of their 200 day moving average. I think gap is at a key point. A lot of the apparel makers are in here. Ross store. Wow. Ross stores is another one. I feel like I'm typing with gloves on here. Ross stores. ROST is another one sort of bouncing off the 200 day constructive uh, and not breaking down, which is encouraging, but not really fine. You know, completing that rotation higher needs to get above its most recent uh, swing high. There are uh, negative charts in there. I put cruise lines. I'd put others, uh, you know, the, the uh, gambling names, Penn, Win, and others in sort of the downtrend and breakdown category. But it's worth noting that I think within consumer, if you screen for stocks making new highs, screen for stocks at their 200 day, and then look for stocks rotating higher like home builders, I don't think you'll struggle to find a lot of names that fit into each of those three categories. We needed to uh, wrap the show, go to the three and three, three charts in three minutes. Here we go. I had a lot of fun talking with Samantha LaDuke about interest rates today. It made me think, and I, I made some notes about a number of things I'd love to dig in a little deeper. It's a lot of interesting perspective on, on uh, inflation. She's talking about inflation continuing while the uh, the Fed is telling us inflation is transitory. So we'll see how that actually plays out. But uh, my friend uh, Matt Maley at Miller Tabak uh, sent around a chart earlier today about the high yield uh, ETF, HYG. And it's worth noting that the high yield ETF is not confirming the S&P most recently. Now, this is not, I don't see this as Dow theory. This isn't saying that when the high yield uh, index does not confirm new highs, that that's it. So for example, back here, February and, uh, and March, you had the S&P, which is in pink, continue to go higher. You had the high yield index uh, not confirming it, but in the end, it rotated back to the upside. But that rotation back to the upside was a great signal of an all clear indicating that conditions were just fine. Right now, you have a similar bearish divergence like you did back in February. And so I think in terms of an all clear for stocks, does the HYG make a higher low? Does it rotate back above its July high? That would certainly give me a lot more confidence about strength going into year end. Chart number two, I actually mentioned uh, in a teaser video earlier today on social media, there are three sectors making new all-time highs today. They're probably not the ones you think. One of them is financials. The second one's consumer staples. And the third one is utilities. Others have had nice moves today and led today, but are not above their all-time highs. Those three sectors are. I'm impressed by what I'm seeing from the utility index. The relative strength, again, just started to come up a little bit, maybe a little early to feel that that's a relative winner by any means. But I like the fact that the, uh, um, the XLU is able to ach achieve new all-time highs today. Finally, we have a ratio of financials to technology. And I'm thinking about the cyclicals versus the non-cyclicals or something like uh, financials over a growthy sector like technology. A ratio like this can be a very interesting one to illustrate that rotation. Financials have been underperforming technology for so long. That's the left uh, of this chart. And further to the left, it comes down a lot uh, for more years before that. But you can see that from the third or fourth quarter of last year through May, financials outperforming. That has had a huge pause over the last couple months. We're seeing it rotate back to the upside. Folks, that's our show for today. Special thank you to Samantha LaDuke from LaDuke Trading, joining us from Massachusetts. For StockCharts.com in Redmond, Washington, I'm Dave Keller. Be safe. Have a great night. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.